Thanks, Alicia. Well, first, uh, first off, uh, just thank you everybody for uh, for uh, for joining us today. I uh, just want to apologize from my behalf on the bad picture that I have uh, provided. So, uh, but uh, then again, it's uh, <laughs> it's it is what it is. So uh, I just let Frank will get uh, get it, get us started, and uh, and I'm hoping that uh, you'll enjoy this session. Yeah, uh, thank you again, everybody, for making time in our busy schedules and. Uh, stay with us to learn more about MES and we're going to try to like keep it really simple so there's not going to be uh, any talks about the uh, relational databases or uh, complex stuff like that web services and um, we're going to try to explain to you like more in a simple way so if we begin now this is where we're going to be showing you today so we're going to talk about uh, quickly about our partnership that we have uh, with Aviva as a uh, with BBA and then we're going to jump into the MES we have some polling questions for you ready as well, just to see how, what, if you guys are using an MES system, we'll see what it is as well uh, within moments. And then MES has different modules. So we're gonna see three modules today, which are called the uh, performance, production, traceability. And then we're gonna finish the webinar with our closing remarks and a session for questions. So if we jump right into the subject, uh, in terms of the partnership. So today you're assisting a webinar uh, with Wonderware Canada East, which is part of the Aviva, and BBA, which is a system, certified system integrator. Um, and the advantage of working with us is basically that we know the industry. So we as an integrator, I work closely with Elvin on multiple projects and we exchange information on uh, what is the current industry standards. And we as an integrator, we try to apply that in most of our projects. So uh, working closely with, uh, with Aviva and uh, BBA as a technical integrator, I think you're set up for, for real success working with us. So in, in terms of um, BBA expertise, on our side, we have a, a lot of subject matter experts, uh, whether it be in mining, manufacturing, uh, electricity, power, um, wastewater, oil and gas, especially. So we specialize in many of the engineering fields and uh, we have a lot of customer projects that go around that. Yeah, and from, from our perspective, uh, obviously we, uh, we try to collaborate as much as we can with our customers. We really understand uh, their needs, uh, different challenges. And uh, once we start uh, collaborating with our customer, we'll bring in uh, some really good partners of ours, such as BBA, uh, just to be able to provide like a complete solution, not only from a software perspective or technology perspective, but also from an engineering perspective. And uh, we've noticed that it's uh, really like a win-win situation for all parties in that instance. Yeah. This is a like first webinar we're doing together. So hopefully we're gonna be able to bring you more webinars, <clears throat> maybe more technical ones. So um, make sure you let us know in future what you would like to see. All right. So. If we go back to our MES presentation, uh, we would like to ask you, uh, what is MES for you? Do you use it uh, in your organization? So we have our polling question set up. So if you want to take just a, maybe a minute to give us your feedback, just so we can adjust uh, to the presentation for you. Oh, great. So, Interesting. Uh, mixed results, yeah. Yeah, it's always fun to see that, uh, yes, it's used. And also we have the same kind of, uh, well, a bigger proportion of people not using it or still looking for more information. So we're going to try to give you a very uh, clear explanation of what MES, so it meets your expectations. All right. So what is MES? Well, from my perspective, it's a um, suite of applications. So we also call this an ecosystem. So we have a lot of, uh, the, well, a couple of uh, applications that are used into the uh, production environments to track and document different transformations of raw materials to the finished goods. And why are we doing that? Is to have smart business decisions. 
Now, MES is a very popular term now, uh, but basically there is another um, term that is also used. It's called the ERP. So MES is not an ERP. And ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. And this is where most of the advanced planning, financial accounting, um, information and business strategies are going to be stored. So the MES is the layer below it, and it's going to be more useful on your plan floor. Okay, so that's the main difference between MES and ERP, just to not to confuse uh, the two. So my vision of MES, basically, it's a couple of um, steps, actually four steps that I see. And the first step is gathering the information. So you can gather the information from your employees on the floor by having digitalized forms where they enter information or connecting your machines with the sensors into databases to make sure that you have the data. But once you have that data, what's the next step in your, uh, in your plant is you have to analyze that information. So from there, you have to take actions. So yes, you have the data, you, you took an analysis of it, but what do you do with it is you have to act. And once you, once you act and you do something with this data, then you learn. And then sometimes you make good decisions, sometimes you'll make bad decisions, but then you'll be able to restart the process and say, okay, for example, um, I didn't gather enough data. So my, uh, my decision pool was very small. So uh, I have to redo the whole cycle. So basically I, in the MES, I always think about gathering, analyzing, acting and then learning from this data. And why would you use an MES? Well, like I said, um, it's easier to track your production. So you know what raw materials are being consumed. What are the different machine parameters that are running for your product? Uh, optimizing scheduling. So your ERP system, your accounting system will send you a particular work order that you have to perform, but you have to know if your machines on the floor are able or are capable of producing that product within the time frame. So an MES system will help you connect those machines, get that inside data, and again, it's to um, provide insightful information for you to make those smart business decisions. So. Uh, we're going to see now how this fits into our manufacturing process within your business. Yeah, and it really seems from the last slide, uh, Ranko, that NMES provides a lot of different benefits, right? So that's uh, that's really a good way to to look at things as well. When uh, when we look at uh, NMES or you know any particular software uh, that is considered technology, we shouldn't be going head first and to applying a technology to better operations, but we should look at three silos that are represented here in terms of looking at the technology that's going to help us improve our operations. And then really looking at the process and people and really looking at how we are, we're able to make those processes better, as well as to make those people more efficient and better at the same time. So when we look at the you know, top left corner, we're looking at different levels within the enterprise. So from the plant floor up to the leadership, there's obviously uh, you know, like a monetary or financial gain uh, that we're able to, uh, to establish at first is that if my people are more efficient, if I'm able to produce more, if my KPIs are on the rise, obviously that represents something that's, uh, that's really uh, quite interesting in terms of, 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 of a technology perspective and also a change management perspective as well. So when we look at the people and how we're able to make them better, uh, obviously different tools are, uh, are, are given to us and really it could be in terms of a mobility, uh, how much data can I get instantly from let's say a tablet, from a smartphone, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when we look at the whole picture, we should look at technology, but we should look at also different aspects that are going to make her business better. And technology is usually something that's going to help us achieve that. And, and really that's the whole point of this, uh, of, of, this, uh, of this slide. But when we look at uh, going a little bit more deeper dive into it, uh, there's a, a specific, specific approach and the, the model driven approach is something that's actually helps us contextualize what we need to do to, uh, to define an MES itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in the Aviva suite of the application, in the MES itself, it's based on that same model-driven uh, uh, approach. 
So there are three steps here. So the first one is digitalizing your processes. So earlier, earlier we have seen it that we need to gather our data. So that part of the digitalization is part of connecting the people and the machines into a centralized system. So then the data can be seen at the same place. So that's why that is important to, is a step one. Step two is gonna be all the standardization we're gonna be doing. So this is especially important if you are a multi-plant operation uh, enterprise where you have different plants. So the idea is to have the systems presented in the same way in those plants to go into your system in terms of um, uh, information being consistent entered in the system. So we have the scorecards that are going to be the same look and feel. The product definitions should be made the same across the board. Then you can compare apples with apples. So some of the people will say, oh, we're different. Well, we're all kind of the same. So if we think about having a system that has the same base value, uh, for example, if we measure our pounds production, well, cartons and cases they are the output product, but sometimes we're able to convert that in the same unit and combine uh, efficiency reports on that same uh, basic uh, unit of, of measure. And final step is the, um, the imp continuous improvement. So all the operational excellence is based on this uh, cycle. So gathering, analyzing, acting upon data, and then learning. So that's how you will be able to connect uh, your, your model-driven MES approach. And in terms of the Aviva technology system layers, uh, Elvin is gonna show you that more in detail. Yeah, so we, we tend to have the questions of, okay, uh, if I get myself an MES system, where does it reside within my enterprise? And through this graphical representation, uh, it's really made simple, obviously. Uh, but, uh, but really, when you look at the plant floor, it's really what automation guys are really used to it, right? So you have like the controllers, you have like the different SCADA systems, the different intelligent devices. And from like an IT perspective or the carpeted space, you have like all these different, uh, you know, uh, solutions or, or, or uh, IT application that serve a specific purpose, such as even uh, inventory data, quality control, et cetera, et cetera. But the MES is really in between. And what we see here is really what uh, we refer to it as a full-blown MES in which there's five modules that actually encompass that. So for somebody that has all these different challenges, they can go ahead and put like all these five uh, modules and really have like a really uh, a big MES for every single functionality that you can think of in terms of the, uh, the execution uh, portion of it on the manufacturing space. But, you know, we tend to work with our customers and say, what's your biggest challenge? If it's inventory or if it's, you know, quality, then we'll just, you know, define, uh, you know, what uh, our customers need. They kind of like look at the ROI behind it and then they kind of like move on and to uh, grow on their MES. What we really wanted to show here is really where that layer of what we're talking about here today is residing. And, and really the whole goal is for you to have like a mental picture of uh, where uh, the MES is and how it interacts. And, uh, and you know, what we can do now is look at the module that's, uh, that's, that's we tend to consider more popular, but uh, with a lot of benefits and that's really the performance. We'll get into more details on that as well. Yeah, great. So now if we look at the performance side, So really what we said is that for performance, what is it exactly? We tend to refer it as OEE or overall effect, uh, equipment effectiveness. And it's really a score that we get as a percentage. And it's really defined by uh, the availability, the uh, efficiency and the quality. And you know that's really the formula that we see on top. And it's really an important KPI within every single company. We want to uh, extract as much as we can from like our assets that actually make us or, or make, make us money through a, a specific production process. And it gives us valuable information as to, you know, if I'm forecasting to produce a, a X amount of product, uh, I really need to actually track uh, this, uh, this effectiveness of my line, skid, or plant itself. It also gives me some some really interesting information on you know, the mean time between failures, the mean time to repair, 
And it gives us an opportunity just to keep improving uh, ourselves every single time. So now let's, uh, let's kind of like uh, pass it over to Branko and let's look at the benefits that I can get out of uh, using such a, such a score or implementing such a solution. Yeah. So I think the main, main differentiator here by having a centralized system, and especially in the MES, is to be able to see your asset in real time. So we know now there's a lot of a redu reduction of labor. So we're going to have less supervisors on the floor. So that same person cannot be at, at five or six equipment at the same time. So he cannot go and see if the machine is running. So now we're trying to expose the visibility of the assets, your production equipment, what's going on in real time into a centralized um, uh, KPI screen and dashboard. And that's going to increase the visibility so you'll know where to work, where to go exactly and how your machine is doing. So once we're, again, gathering uh, data from these equipment, we're able to do analysis. For example, finding what was the root cause for a certain issue on an equipment, on a conveyor, would it be a motor, a critical motor that you have? Is it an operation problem with the operator or is it something mechanical? So we're able to diagnose that if you collect that information, obviously. So all this is part of the uh, continuous improvement initiatives. But I think what's important to know is that sometimes when you have uh, difficulties justifying a, an investment on a new machine or in a certain part of the process, well, this is, these tools will help you prove to your upper management that say, okay, we have reached the maximum capacity of this machine and in order to, to meet your production goals, we need to invest into, let's say, a, a second machine. But you cannot just say that are in the air. You need data to prove it to your upper management. And if you have the data, then your CapEx initiatives will definitely be uh, easier to justify. And in terms of uh, going back to that visibility, I think we have some, uh, some simple screens to show you the, uh, the different uh, asset availabilities. Yeah, so we've, see, we've seen a lot of theory, but when we see the solution, usually this is what uh, my uh, end users will actually look at. Each color represents, uh, you know, like an asset or a line, uh, and I can really get a clear understanding of where I'm at at all times. I can slice the dice the data in terms of getting like my OE score on the top left, and then kind of like dissecting the availability, performance, and quality and then can actually go into a deeper dive and assess, okay, each equi specific equipment uh, and really how it's behaving. And, and you know, that's really something that uh, we can actually have like a better understanding when we take a deeper dive, we can definitely get more cues and more get more granular. And really that's what, uh, what Frank was gonna actually show us here in this particular slide. Yeah, it's just a, just a simple slide. Uh, Obviously, these tools come in the box, so they are simple reports. Uh, for example, in this case, we're looking at a piece of equipment that we're analyzing its data for the last hour. So the system automatically compiles this. There's no Excel behind it <laughs> to make this running. So it's a really easy interface. Uh, it's doing Pareto analysis, for example, the top five reasons, uh, simple colors to tell you if its machine is in downtime, uptime, or maybe even idle. So you'll see maybe in, in the scheduling, uh, when you make your products, you want to avoid machine being in the idle. So this is how you measure it. So, and obviously the OEE component, which brings those three different uh, calculations in place. So you can say, okay, this month we've been doing this product, we're getting this OEE score. And then you can put maybe dollar amounts for that. See if it's profitable to make this product. And then obviously your ERP system, since that's the accounting one, then you can, you can put different weights on different products and judge customers if this is a good product, if it's bringing money and value to your organization. So these are the tools that will help you achieve that. So we have another polling question. So we're gonna present to you a second polling question is, um, where do you think performance tracking would be beneficial to your organization? So we'll let you some time to uh, answer that. And we'll see what is the, uh, what is your opinion? Mm -hmm. 
Maybe just a little bit more time, so we'll see. There's a new expression now, it's the, uh, well, I don't know if it's new, but it, uh, the data is the new oil. So, all right, let's see what we have. Uh, we definitely have a good percentage of uh, people saying that they want to standardize the way the performance is measured across the plants. Yeah, that is a big one. We do have a holistic overview. That's exactly, it. especially as we're getting now with the COVID, everything has to be kind of like instantaneous. Is it on my iPad, on my iPhone? So that's really good to see. And yeah, there is uh, also tracking and evaluating operators' efficiency. Yeah. As we're stretching our employees to the max or even trying automating. Uh, so yeah, that's also a good point. Good. Thank you uh, everybody for answering that. And we're gonna go see our uh, second module, which is gonna be the production. So. In terms of the production module, the important focus here is that it's based on the order execution and how we're able to adapt in terms of the agility and flexibility on the plant floor. Because our financial and accounting system will tell us, okay, you have to make this product with this time frame, and that's it. And when MES system gets it on the floor, well, it's up to us to see how we can plan this on the machines uh, is the machine able to produce it? Does it have the correct components to, for the consuming of that uh, consumes and the uh, produced, where the inventory is going to be? And also to manage uh, different statuses to be able to adapt for any uh, unplanned events. And so that's what we have to keep an eye on. So in terms of the, um, the benefits, since if you remember earlier, we had the, the first step of the of these initiatives is to digitalize uh, the, uh, the processes. So we have, if we have that in place, it's gonna be easier to know what are the consumables, what's coming into the production. So you'll be able to take the, uh, the good steps towards that. And also having a holistic view of the production. So for example, if you're in your current schedule, you wanna know what's your current production versus what you're supposed to produce per hour, per day, per shift, per month. So that also allows employees to, to feel empowered. So they know what they're doing and what goal they're, they're, they're going to, to reach. So that's, they need that data and they expect that. So we also have a younger working force on the floor and they're more technology savvy. So they expect the data they like, they're self-intuitive. So for them, it's, it's also um, a good, uh, a good um, initiative. So. And now we're going to see a production case study that's related to the, uh, to the initiative of a production module. Yeah, so what we have here is a, it's a food and beverage customer, and it's specifically in the dairy industry. And uh, obviously the approach is to uh, identify where uh, the different goals and uh, different challenges that a customer has and, you know, what they can achieve with, you know, like our, our solution. Uh, in this particular instance, they wanted some uh, traceability. Uh, they wanted also, uh, you know, like uh, a better connectivity within within the plant floor. And obviously, uh, they wanted to have like a uh, total cost of ownership of the solution to be not as high as they're used to it. In food and beverage, especially, you have like these uh, these entities, they do like these black box solution and you're kind of like stuck with them and just to do uh, some upgrades, it's very expensive. So, uh, you know, oddly enough, I, I see quite a bit of these uh, on the field. And uh, really the challenge that they had is that uh, everything was paper based. So uh, that really uh, had like a lot of, you know, challenges for them internally. And, and, uh, and really what we wanted is to, to address that. And uh, through like our different products that you see like on the left, and it's really around like uh, an MES solution is, uh, is really the results that they have with, were really quite significant. And really the one that I liked is uh, in terms of the time spent on really doing the traceability and the genealogy of the raw products through like the, the actual end product was that the fact that they went from like four hours and, and you know, doing this sort of like uh, intervention to around like one minute. Uh, that's really huge guys. And I've actually seen these type of situations before in which 
when they're uh, audited or when they do like need to re uh, retrieve information from uh, from the actual batch or from like the actual product itself quality uh the quality department just closes his door and all, all the employees are start like looking at different piles of paper and uh, and it's really really long uh, but also the roi that we talked about earlier on in this case was achieved uh, a little bit under one year which is which is great which is fantastic and really the fact that they were able also to produce uh, or to achieve their goals of producing uh, the number of cans per minute that they're set up to. And, and really that's something that not only uh, augmented their yield, it really reduced their, uh, their operational expenses through like the, uh, the time that we see here. But, uh, but yeah, like def definitely a lot of, a lot of different, uh, I would say positive or added value. And, uh, and really what, uh, what we wanted to show here is that uh, once we start collaborating together, we can definitely look at the different benefits that uh, surround such a solution. So uh, without further ado, uh, you know, it'd be, uh, I think it'd be interesting to actually see from like a production scheduling integration uh, scenario, what like an MES and how it, it interacts with your different systems can look at. So I'll let Brian Paul uh, touch base on that. Sure. And just one little thing to add before we jump into that. Um, more technical point is sometimes jumping into these initiatives in terms of implementing an MES system. What we suggest is to make a little study uh, where we have industry 4.0 uh, integrators certified here at BBA that we can talk with you and analyze your current situations. So sometimes by calculating how much would it cost you not to have a certain module of the MES or your operational excellence initiatives, what is the cost of that? towards what is the cost of purchasing a solution. So sometimes waving that into the equation kind of um, gives you also your roadmap for the implementation, which is important to have from a, a business strategy. So that's something that DBA also offers uh, before we start a project, make sure that we are aligned with your business strategy before we just start installing software and configuring it and whatnot is to meet that. So that's something uh, important to note. But, uh, if we look at the, 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 the production scheduling piece of it in terms of uh, how it's done more in, in a technical uh, way. So we have that work order, which is the instruction being sent down to the MES to do something within a fixed period of time. So the ERP will give you your start and finish dates and you have to make X amount of these products, for example, or you have to perform this operation within that time frame. So MES will take that, will work with it, will also integrate that with the inventory that you have, make sure that you have your consumables ready and that you're counting your produced. And all that is reported back to your uh, financial accounting system. And I hope it's not Excel. <laughs> so, um, joke aside, but in terms of the benefits for that in the scheduling, we want to measure also, again, going back to that gathering, analyzing, acting upon data is your idle time. So make sure that your machines are being used. So here it's, we're not going to buy a new machine just for the sake of it, but we'll be able to, use, to, to calculate that usage time. So measuring all the setup time that is used to prepare for those products and also doing, for example, uh, material shortages. So we can expect that if we know what's the throughput of this machine, that we're gonna be lacking this material that's gonna be important for our production. So that's also good to have in this centralized system. So uh, in terms of a workflow, so we're gonna show you now how that's done, for example, within an operator uh, where they are getting instructions on what needs to be done. Yeah, and I uh, just want you guys to bear with me on this slide here. I just uh, you know, want to make it uh, as simple as I possibly can. So one of the easiest way to uh, gain return on investment is to go paperless. So when we look at uh, our work order, once it's generated, it usually travels on specific steps, step one to three, depending on what process it is. And what we're trying to achieve here is make that paper uh, work order into a digital form and that's obviously like what we call a workflow so we're trying to make that process paperless as a whole 
So what we see here on the bottom left is that once a work order is generated uh, through the ERP and through like the MES, the operator will get a specific list of instructions. And what we're showing here, we're showing like a, like a, a semi-automated uh, type of situation, but something, this is something you can you know, fully automate if you want or fully make it uh, uh, operator uh, based. And what we see here is an operator gets uh, an actual checklist. She has to fill up a certain, uh, a certain things. Once she does that, that work order goes to her supervisor. In instance, her supervisor is actually verifying what she inputs and getting, giving her the approval just to move on to the next step, which would be to uh, start the actual uh, process that we see here on the top right. She gets so she fills up more information, then she can just uh, execute through the MES uh, the actual process itself. But once we uh, see uh, the centerpiece, we're actually looking at what the, the workflow is, how the work order traveled uh, within our process, and we're able to measure what, how much time it took from each for, for each step to be executed. So we saw from the questionnaire previously that some of you want to make your operators more efficient, and it's, this is one of the other ways to actually do it. So uh, we can kind of like take a little, a, a little video, uh, look, uh, show you a little video on how this is actually executed. We're gonna, we're gonna move fast just for, for the sake of time. And really this is what we actually talked about. So the operator goes there, she gets her checklist, she starts filling up things. There's like those two check boxes at the top that she didn't really fill out. Uh, she still sends it to her supervisor. Her supervisor they then through his application opens up the actual work order or the workflow application looks at the work order and uh, opens it and kind of like notices that uh, her operator, his operator did not check those first two things. Then he goes into the comments, starts inputting, listen, you didn't verify the sensors, you didn't clean the actual lenses itself. Uh, you should really uh, take a look into that, please. So once he actually uh, approves this, uh, this, uh, this, this, this step, the operator goes into the actual system itself, pulls out the actual work order, uh, looks at the uh, the supervisor uh, comments that were inputted in terms of the actual two boxes that she did not check, and then provides an explanation as to why she didn't do it. Once she does that, everything is documented for audit uh, audit purposes, and then like she can actually start the process uh, once everything is uh, is is closed loop. So it's really made uh, in a, in a semi automatic way in this instance, but uh, kind of like shows how. Uh, the system can interact with an operator if you actually wish to do so. So, uh, so really, what we wanted to do through that is really jump into uh, the the our last module, which which is the traceability. So, I'll let uh, Brian touch base on that. Yeah. Well, just to give you a little uh, tap on your shoulder, uh, it's really good. You're a very good operator. <laughs> uh, <that's the laughs> Elvin. So, uh, this is great to see, and this is one of the functional demos that we have also. So, it's just not a static presentation. So it could be customizable to your process and um, let us know if this is something that you like. And uh, yeah, we have a polling question for you guys. Um, it's gonna be regarding uh, this production. So where do you see the benefits of automating your production tracking process? And this one is multiple choices. So if you feel like uh, there are more choices, go ahead. Thanks. Oh, we have the results uh, available right now. Okay. So in the top one is real-time information on the production performance. So yeah, that is, um, that is definitely a good one. So I think combining that with digitization, you guys are going to be really ahead by at least starting uh, with those two to begin with. Okay, great. And we have one more now module to see, uh, which is the traceability. So the traceability in, in terms of itself, what it does is basically ensuring the full audit trace. So we want to make sure that we have some processes in place that all of our 
programs, applications, and processes are interconnected. So that's that's the main main focus. So we're looking to see what production was done or your processes uh, that were created, all that to create what we call a product uh, genealogy. Now, product genealogy is sounds like a complicated term, but in reality, it's not. So basically, what it is, it's a um, it provides information for whatever manufacturing processes you have with the raw materials and it's linked to what equipment it was produced on, what were the, uh, for example, inspection uh, tests that were done, what quality tests were done, who was the operator, uh, what particular settings were done in that uh, machine, all that to justify um, the production needs, what was done at that time. So once we have all those uh, components integrated, well, it's easier for us to have faster information retrieval in case we have a product recall. So if we get the call that says, okay, there's something wrong with our product, then we don't have to call three, four departments and ask for their information. Send me an email with your report. That person is on vacation or, or this is written in by hand. So that yeah, adds the amount of time into your analysis and every and person on the other line is waiting for the decision you know what do we do with this product and it's also within your current production that you have you're able to know if you're going to have issues shipping this to the customer so you can put a, a hard stop onto this product before it reaches your customer and we do this why well because we want to protect our brand name so that's, that's very important. And we want customers to order more stuff from us, definitely, because we want to ship them a quality product. And in terms of um, how does this work within our plant floor, we have a little scenario here that it's uh, being done of how it's executed with different systems. So we know we have an ERP system, we have an inventory warehouse, we have finished goods. So this could probably look like your operations or it could be similar. But basically, uh, the process is very simple. MES receives uh, some information. And then from there, the process is uh, automatically started. We have information going to the warehouse and from the warehouse for the production that it's required. The work processes, the work orders are uh, sent to us. So we know what we have to make. And there are some uh, more ERP words that are consume and produce. So that's very important to know that you make something, you need to consume materials and produce materials. So when we talked about product genealogy, this is what we're talking about, tracking, tracing, what goes in, what comes out. And then finally, when we send that to the warehouse, the, uh, the ERP system for your financial is notified and we get to ship out this um, uh, product that we're making. And now we're going to see how that fits into uh, a more, an example in real time for traceability and the genealogy. Yeah, so this is really uh, like a graphical representation of what our genealogy looks like. When you look at the uh, blue rectangles, this is like what we call a phase. This could be like a, a mixing or like a heating uh, or agitation process. So uh, you have like these different ingredients or uh, different materials that go into uh, from left to right into the uh, uh, blue rectangle that's a phase. And then like the output of those, uh, those rectangles is really the uh, combination of uh, those uh, products and so on and so on. So once you start uh, mixing a whole bunch of stuff, it's really critical for us, uh, for you guys or for, for anybody for that matter to have a clear understanding of which equipment made the, that the specific uh, phase, what uh, raw materials got in, which one got out, what times, temperatures, all the different data that you can imagine are important is really something that, uh, that it's, uh, it's critical in terms of having your genealogy. So from, from, from a quality perspective, from like a food safety perspective, from like uh, every, 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 every element that uh, makes your, uh, your product a good finished product is, is really important just to, to really have that holistic and overall picture. And when, when we look at getting more details, our next slide kind of like shows a video 
and uh, a quick video for that matter of uh, of really uh, having understanding of, of what you're looking at here. So when when you see that, you can click on on, on your product. You can go backwards. You can have like a, like a detailed uh, description of uh, your 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 the, the raw material, the product that went into that phase. Uh, the which equipment, like I said, that went in, uh, the different types of uh, uh, actions that were performed. Uh, so all that data is really available for you guys at uh, the simple click, such as the one we saw like in the success story for that instance. Uh, we're also able to, uh, to have like a, like a very good understanding of all the times, uh, the time data. So from like, ex from like a, a specific date to an end date, uh, what really happened in between, uh, you know, I can really do some SPC uh, type of analysis within my, uh, my data itself. I can really, really have everything that, uh, that, that I would want in terms of any audit, in terms of any, any uh, genealogy requirements that I may have within my plant floor. Uh, it's, it's really a detailed a detail type of a module that provides me with all the, the genealogy details that I would require. Uh, definitely a lot of details, uh, obviously, in, in, in this video, but in this subject matter for, 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 for that case. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of like go over it very quickly. I know we're running out of time, obviously, but, uh, but that's really something that I think uh, deserves a little bit more time in terms of explanation, dissecting really what the module does. But just to give you an overall picture, genealogy is really having an understanding of who, uh, what ingredients are part of your final product, and then everything that, that's in between times, data, uh, different types of uh, variables are included there. So, uh, so really, it's it's something that uh, went quite fast. Obviously, apologize for that, but uh, you know, we 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 just wanted to kind of like uh, show yeah, expose, uh, yeah. And it, and if you think just quickly, if you think about the, the this module, I kind of think it's like picture in time. So if you want to see what the picture was in that time, so you can just choose your time and just see what the operator ran, what are the machine parameters that you used. For example, you can know if it's a more experienced operator versus a new employee. So you can compare their pictures in time by doing this type of a traceability analysis. So uh, contact us later if you want to speak more on the subject. And uh, I think Elvin has another poll question. Uh, we're going to ask you uh, if we have one, I think. Yeah, we do. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little uh, traceability poll questions. I, I know that you guys might be running off, but you know, obviously it's something that, uh, that I think that uh, traceability comes, uh, becomes very important, uh, you know, for, 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 for a number of reasons, uh, obviously. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you guys answer. And then we'll go into closing remarks uh, just to, uh, to be respectful of, respectful of your time. There was a third question I would have added is, do you have Excel too? <laughs> That's yes, it's across it's the board, the Franco. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, so. Uh, hmm. Surprised by the first one, yeah. So almost 50 50 there. Yeah. All right, well, perfect. So. Thank you, everybody, for answering that. And uh, we're going to see now into the go jump right now into the closing remarks. Yes, yes. We so got again. excited talking about them, yes. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where everybody's like, okay, let's get this over with. But one last thing, one uh, little uh, piece of nugget is that uh, one portion that we didn't really see or one subject we didn't touch base on is really the advanced planning and scheduling. We want to organize like a future meeting just on this because uh, we mentioned a few times the Excel spreadsheet. A lot of uh, our customers are using Excel as a means to uh, you know, uh, schedule their production. This uh, is really an engine that we have a solution that we have with like an AI engine behind where you uh, kind of inject some constraints and it optimizes your, your production. It's pretty incredible. It's really, 
you know, from, from my perspective, a low hanging fruit in terms of getting the more out of your buck, so to speak. Uh, so just stay tuned for that. I think it's going to be like a great webinar. So, uh, so yeah, who knows? Maybe it's going to be with BBA, right? Uh, Rankles? Yeah. yeah. Looking yeah. forward. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, we just, uh, if we put, put on the next slide, we're, we just want to be sure that you get our contact information. If you want more, if you have more questions or, or, uh, or, or if you want to talk about like your, your different situations, please feel free to contact either, either Branko or myself. We, we talk to each other often. So uh, it'd be a pleasure just to answer that. So again, I really appreciate your time. So uh, I'll, I'll just you know, let uh, Branko uh, give his closing remarks.